Anything? Yeah, this J Zone, aka Captain Backslap. <laughs> 2004 Bobby Brown, the Tom Jones are rapping. When I'm not out food shopping with your mama, I'm checking out the stores in the static and I'm buying tapes. Y'all don't know about tapes. Look at this. Drew Down, the original, out of print. MC Pooh, Pooh Man, Life of a Criminal, Bloods and Crips banging on wax. BWP, bitches with problems. Y'all don't know about this kind of stuff. You need to get educated, but this is distortion of static. I'm about to go pay for my merchandise and get up on out of here. Yeah. I, I hear like you, you have a big West Coast influence, man. Is that true? I like stuff from everywhere, man. To me, music is music. I mean, people try to put up boundaries and stuff, and you know, I mean, back in the days, you would see N.W.A., De La Soul, L.L., and, and Slick Rick tour together. And nowadays, it's just kind of a segregation. And I always thought that was whack. I mean, I grew up listening to De La Soul and, and, and you know, Bismarck E., but I also listened to 415 and King T and Too Short and Ann Banks and, you know, Ghetto Boys and stuff from Miami, like Poison Clan, Two Live Crew. I mean, I, stuff from all over the map, man. West Coast, East Coast, South. It's all music to me. As long as there's good music everywhere and there's trash everywhere. Basically, so I mean, you know, I have a wide variety of influences from all over the place. So I mean, I, to me, that has that has no bearing on me. I had J. Ro and King T on my last album, and I have Devin the Dude from Houston on my new album. You know what I'm saying? I just did some tracks with Casual from Hieroglyphics. He's out here in the Bay, you know. So to me, that that's nothing, man. It's all about good music, and good music is so hard to come by nowadays. Like, why break it down by territory, man? It's just. I'm influenced by stuff from everywhere, man. I want to work with people from everywhere, so it's all, you know it's cool with me. That's cool. That's cool. So for people at home that don't know, can you give a brief like discography of what you've done, your past work, uh, present work? Man, it started in '99. Music for Two Madre. That was my first album, senior project. You know what I'm saying I had done some independent stuff before then, but pff, you'd be lucky to find any here. Worth if you find it, it ain't worth nothing. It's about ten cents on eBay, so I ain't even gonna bother mentioning it. You can't even get rich off it. Um, my, that was my first album. Uh, second album was Music uh, Bottle of Whoop Ass in 2000. Pimps Don't Pay Taxes in 2001. Sick of Being Rich in 2003. And A Job Ain't Nothing But Work, September 28th, 2004. Album number five. You know, I, I, all of them self produced, rhymed on all of them. You know, some of them I had some help. You know, I had Hug and Sheed, you know, the two MCs I started out with. And then as I went on, I worked with like Master Ace, as I said, J Row and King T, Devin the Dude, self titled. A lot of different people. I've done production for like Bismarck E, Akinelli, you know, MF Grimm, Tame One, um, you know, a lot, a lot of different people, you know, Prince Poe. So I'm just trying to keep it going, you know, just work out. I'm, I'm getting the chance to work with a lot of people whose music I grew up on. So that's cool. You know what I'm saying? That's if, if it was all to end tomorrow for me, I could at least say I went out happy because I got a chance to work with dudes I was listening to when I was 11, 12 years old. You know, cats I respect. I mean, casual. All these people I grew up on, man. So it's cool. It's cool with me. You know, I'm, I'm, ha I'm just trying to have fun with it. A lot of people take it real serious. I'm not really a political dude. I just get out there and have fun. You know what I'm saying? If you don't take it too serious, you're going to get out there and have fun with me, man. You know, I come out with the fur coat, have a little bit of fun. You know, get dirty. It's all good. So is this your first time out here in the Bay? Yeah, well, my, my first time for music. It's my second time overall. My pops used to live in San Jose. In 96, he took me to that uh, Amoebas up in Berkeley and Rasputin, and I spent about $500 in one day. And I came home broke. I had so many records, I had to mail them back. You know, but um, I haven't been to the Bay Area since then. So this is my second time in my life being in the Bay Area and the first time I'm ever here for a show. So, you know, I'm real, I'm real cool. Y'all got some hills, though, man. Y'all got, got to cut them things down to do, excavate, do something. Yep. So, um... Right as of now, are you are you on a label? Are you signed or unsigned, independent? What's, what's going on with that? Um, well, Old Mid Entertainment is my label. Um, I, I set up shop in 99, but was doing it independent. And then in 2001, I, I got a P&D with Fat Beats, pressing and distribution. So, you know, I own my, you know, my catalog, but I have a nice, you know, P&D, a nice, you know, arrangement with them. And Fat Beats distributes all my stuff. And BMG, they distribute my CDs. You know, now I have, I have that going on through Fat Beats. So, you know, it's now I'm finally able to, I've, I've always, you know, that's why I have love for places like this. I've always been in here, but now finally I can get up in the Tower Records and, you know, Virgin Mega Store. You know, that, that was something I didn't have my first two records. And then, you know, after a while, I built enough buzz on my own independence, so now I can get it in the chains. You know, so me and, you know, Justin Timberlake can compete for that spot. <laughs> 
right, that's cool, that's cool. So uh, I'm taking it to the Grammys next year. There ain't no, there okay. ain't no game. All right, we'll be waiting, we'll be waiting. Uh, so um, I ask every every artist we interview this, how do you feel about the state of hip-hop right now? And if, has it changed, or what do you see in the future, or what's going on? Well, with me, this is how I feel. I mean, if you feel like it's ever, I mean, if you honestly can say that it's going to go back to what it was 12, 13 years ago, you're bugging, you're lying. I mean, it's never going to be what it was in 89, 90, 91. Like, when I first got into it, I was broke. Like, I was dressed like a bum growing up. I still dress like a bum. <laughs> but I'm saying growing up, every week I was buying two or three tapes, two or three albums, two or three CDs. I bought three albums this year. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's never going to be what it was. And I don't mean to sound grim, but I don't, I don't go around and, and, and let it weigh me down. Like, I don't let that stop me from coming out and having fun. So, I mean, you know, you could sit around and mope about it. Or you could just do what you can, you know, do your part and try to make the best records you can. And that's what I do. I mean, I get out here and have fun like it's still 1990. You know what I'm saying? We know that it ain't going to be what it was. Uh, too much money got in the game. Too many people who don't really care about the music got in the game. It'll never be what it was. But that doesn't mean you can't come out, have fun, and make some good music. There's a lot of people still making good music. You know, so, I mean, I'm just, it's not going to stop me. I'm going to get in here and have fun until I can't do it no more. You know, and I'm going to come out here. And to me, it's all about having fun, man. Like... Even a group like Public Enemy, as political as they were, they was having fun. You know what I'm saying? They were enjoying what they were doing. It wasn't like just it wasn't just to get a check or it wasn't just to get props. It, it was just more just to, to go out and do what you do best and have fun. And that's my approach. My approach ain't never going to change, man. I get out here and just it's entertainment, man. Get out here and have some fun. So, you know. Cool. That's real. That's real. So, um. What what is what does J Zone bring to the game that not a lot of artists bring? Like when you when you pick up a J Zone album, what are you gonna hear beat wise, rhyme wise? What you know what's original? Beat wise, I'm always off the wall. I'm always doing some new crazy bugged out stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like the sound is wild, but it still has the thump. You know what I'm saying? Because I like my stuff to hit you know hit in the trunk. I like heavy 808, a lot of bass. So you know it'll be good for your system, but it'll also be kind of catch you off guard. That's my trademark. Rhymes. I'm a joker, man. Like I said, I'm not going to change the world. I'm not going to be political. I'm not going to uplift you or educate you in any way whatsoever. Not at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your IQ actually might drop a few thousand points when you pop in a J-Zone CD. But, you know, if you know how to, if you don't take things too serious and have fun, you know, and you can, you can enjoy a little bit of ignorant, funny, you know, humor, that's what I do. I'm really into storytelling. I'm not really a freestyler. I'm not really a battle MC. I'm more of a producer than an artist, than a rapper, you know what I'm saying? But... When it comes to rapping, man, like, I'm not going to try to battle everybody and take them out. I'm not going to talk about shooting nobody. That's not me, you know what I'm saying? I just, I tell stories, you know, and I bring humor, you know. And, and if you like funny stories, you know, like a humorous version of, like, a Slick Rick or even an Easy e you know what I'm saying? Like, or, you know, where he used to tell funny stories, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's the kind of stuff that motivates me, you know. And that, that's where I get my personality from. So that's, that's where I'm coming from, man, having fun with it. Job ain't nothing but work, man. It's all over the place. It's crazy, man. I just, I basically took a couple of rap albums and li listened to only those for like a couple, you know, five months when I was working on it. And, you know, beat wise, it wound up sounding like a twisted version of the first Cypress Hill album. It just kind of came out sounding like just a real funk, grungy, dirty rock kind of sound. And rhyme wise, man, it was like I said, man. A tad bit of Easy E, a tad bit of Too Short, a tad bit of, you know, uh, De La Soul, a tad bit of Bismarck E, a tad bit of Slick Rick, just a little bit of that stuff, Old Dirty Bastard, all thrown in one, man. It's just, it's fun, man. If you, if you, you know, if you don't take it too serious, you like to have some fun, that's what I'm into. You're going to enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's ignorant, but it's funny. It's all over the place, and you'll, you'll love it. Buy it 17, 18, 19 times. Buy it here when it comes out. 21 times, 22 times, you know, little sound scan, put a little money in the pocket. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. So uh, for people that want to keep up on on where you're going to be at, albums are coming out, uh, how can they stay up? You got a website or anything? Got a website, zonesite.net, Z-O-N-E-S-I-T-E.net. I update it really rarely because I'm so busy running around and I got to, you know, type in the updates and stuff. And um, I, haven't, I haven't redesigned my site in a long time. <laughs> I got to get around to that. But um but it's all, for informational purposes, the latest the latest on me is always up. You know what I'm saying? It's always there. My email's there. Oldmaybillionaires at hotmail.com. Y'all can email me. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing. I'll email you right back. So it's just give me a couple of days, man. Don't blow it up, man. All right. That's cool. That's cool. You got any kind of closing statements for people? Like 
for for artists trying to come up or anything? Got any words of advice? Yeah, man, just do what you do best. Don't pay attention. You know, critics are gonna say stuff, and you know, I learned. You know, if if anything, I most important lesson I learned in this game is that, you know, you you can't please everybody, man. Like you just gotta kind of. I I've learned that a niche following is is a great thing, and you can kind of just just do what comes to you, man. Don't. Don't worry about what other people think. I mean, a lot of people try to do stuff to, to get bigger and better. Or they try to do things to get people to like them. I just say do what you want to do, man. Half half a rap loves me, half a rap hates me. But I always learned that being an extremist is the best thing. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're loved and hated, at least you're remembered. So half the people hate me, half the people love me. I wouldn't have it any other way. So. Cool, cool. Any shout outs? Uh, shout outs. I don't put them in my liner notes, so I damn sure don't do them for the camera. Okay, okay. <laughs> Cool. Thanks to y'all for, for doing this, you know what I'm saying, and, and Amoeba for letting us do this, and everybody that support Jay's own, straight up. You know what I'm saying, my man, big up to my man DJ Contact, my partner, he's in here somewhere, digging for records, you know what I'm saying, and um, Dick Stallion, the whole crew, everybody, so. It's all good. Cool, cool, thanks a lot, man.